Hi everyone. Here's an update for the recent dry January 2022. In fact, when I created this presentation, I didn't know what type of photos to share since it was so dry during 2022 in January. Numerous Santa Ana wind and dry conditions dominated the weather here in Southern California. Here's an update for you. Take a look at some of the sunsets that were provided from this dry weather pattern. January not only was bone dry across California and Southern California, it was all or nothing following what we just saw in the wet December. Temperatures, as you would expect with the dry weather pattern, were mild, above average, and very much above average for our mountains as shown here. If we look at the water year so far, we can see Southern California is again starting to dry out, get below average for all of our area, except for a small area in the mountains. Temperatures are also running above average, especially in the mountains and deserts, with generally dry conditions in November and January, with sandwiched in the middle a very wet December. If you look at how wet December was, as a reminder, not only was it wet across most of central Southern California, but it was two to four times as wet as a normal December. In fact, the Big Bear area had three months of precipitation just packed into December. What has this done to the fuel moisture or the vegetation across Southern California? This is a map of fuel moisture, dead fuels, not the live grasses, which are now greening up from the warm, dry weather following the December rain. This is dead fuel moisture, and it shows a rapid fall off from very wet conditions on January 1st, now down to near record dry levels for this time of year. How dry? Well, locations such as Riverside, compared to other years, we can see that 2022 is going down as number six. There have been several years with zero, including 2014, which had a trace. Let's take a look at Big Bear Mountain. They had record rainfall in the month of December with over 13 inches of rain falling, making it one of the wettest months for December, only 0.21 for January. Another mountain location, Idlewild, shown here, number eight, driest. If we look at a valley location in an urban area such as Santa Ana with a long history of information, January 2022, number seventh driest with only 0 0.05. If we look at the city of Anaheim, just to the north, only 0 0.08, landing it in the top three. Now, what does our water year look like so far? We had large gains in the month of December. Now we're looking at deficits over all areas, except for a couple locations such as Santa Ana and Big Bear, which were very wet in December. In fact, Big Bear, thanks to that 14 inches of rain they had in the month of December, are still running quite a bit above average. All other locations considerably below average ranging from a half inch to as much as two inches below average, San Diego Airport over an inch below where it should be this time of year. Here's a look at our most recent drought monitor. Shows considerable improvement across the West, and you can see specifically in California, thanks to the wet December, there was improvement in all the green shaded areas. However, most of California remains in the D1 moderate to D2 severe. I mentioned earlier that the sunsets and the dry January had its fair share of Santa Ana winds. Is that unusual? Well, actually, Santa Ana winds in occurrence and magnitude tend to peak out in January. In other words, some of the strongest Santa Ana winds occur in the month of January. The main difference is the wildfire activity and, and the resultant impact from that is focused more in the October to December autumn period when conditions are usually at its driest after the long summer. 
Here's a look at the latest California water supply, a key component to the drought monitor. We can see across California, significant gains have been made. In fact, Lake Oroville from 20% low up to 46% of capacity. Still considerable ways to go, but we now see a lot of the reservoirs at least much closer to the historical levels they should be at. If we look more closely in Southern California, we can look at Big Bear Lake. For example, 15 feet below its level, its lowest point was about 17 feet. That occurred earlier in 2021. Diamond Valley Reservoir in Riverside County, the decline has slowed. It is down to 73% of capacity, but at least it's leveled off. If we look at Big Bear Lake alone, we can see that 176 inches of rain has occurred since 2012. Remember, that was our last start of drought. The average during that period is about 190 inches. So we are still missing about 14 inches of rain over the past several years, even at Big Bear. And that's likely what is showing up as the deficit and the lower water levels, despite a recent wet December. Let's take a look at the snowfall. Massive gains were made with record snowfall in December 2021. Unfortunately, we are now down to 90 to 95% of average. So we've dropped from about 130% of average to 95% of average just in one month. So a lot of the gains in December have gone away because of such dry conditions in the month of January. Let's take a little bit closer look. We can see it's flatlined across the Sierra Nevada, the blue line. Massive gains in December. In fact, historical record snowfall in Lake Tahoe in December. But not much to show in January with no precipitation. To show you how little snow occurred, here's Mammoth Mountain in the Sierra Nevada. The month of January, zero. The month of December, 161 inches. If we take a quick look at the Sierra Nevada precipitation, so that includes water and snow, it is now at 116% of average, but it is flatlined as shown here in blue with no precipitation the month of January. So let's look further east over Colorado, which is an important source of water as well. Some good news there is Lake Mead is leveled off at its all-time low that occurred in 2021, and the water level is slowly going up. And the Colorado Basin is also sitting a little bit over 100% of average precipitation. But both reservoirs, Powell and Mead, considerably below where they should be this time of year. Major deficits. Let's look at some of the reason why. Well, December 2021, the jet stream was parked right across California, but all of the jet stream was coming directly from the north. So several of these events, in fact, three of them tapped into atmospheric rivers and moved right into Southern California. Big block of the jet stream was shown and it shifted further west into the Gulf of Alaska, allowing for that storm track into California. If we look at January, just one month later, 2022, an unusual block or warm core of the atmosphere shifted right over Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. This is the same weather pattern we had that brought record heat in the summer of 2021. But instead, this occurred in January, one of our most critical wettest months historically, and this allowed for the near record-breaking dry January across California. If we look back to other years when we've had snow droughts for one month or one entire season, 2014-15, probably the biggest snow drought we saw in history in California. Upper level high pressure was not around just for one month, but when you looked at the entire water year, it was right on top of us as shown here. Very extreme weather pattern. If we look at what's the last normal wet year, if that is, exists, 
We can look back in 2018-19, which was wet in Southern California, and we had an average jet stream that was allowed to come across the Central and Northern Pacific and cut across Southern California, as shown here. But we had significant blocking to the north that basically shut off the jet stream in that area, but the jet stream was allowed to undercut that block. Now, if we look at the start of the most current drought, 2019-20, that was very dry in Northern California, but wet in Southern California, you can see this massive dome, upper level high pressure began as early as 2019 as shown here. It hasn't gone away. It flattened out a little bit last year, 2020 to 2021, which was dry also in Southern California. But this prevailing weather pattern, which is around in January, 2022, was around over the past recent years as well. In fact, take a look at these extremes. If you look at a very wet year, historically the wettest year on record for the Sierra Nevada, Northern California, 2016, 17. And then the average weather pattern the following year with two areas of blocking or warm upper level high pressure dominating. So these are night and day comparisons of how extreme our weather patterns have been and how extreme they can be for individual months and for entire seasons like shown here. Do we expect to change? Ultimately, that's the question you have. Latest from the Climate Prediction Center indicates not much change. Below average for most of California for middle of February. Not a zero chance for any rain in Southern California, but below average and milder than average conditions for mid-February as dominant upper level high pressure continues to block most storms. They would have to go directly underneath or up and over. Now, how about further out into mid to late February? Not much hope either, below average conditions, but do note that at least there's a equal chance for much of California as we get deeper into mid and late February. If we look at the computer model information, it shows the same thing, overall dry pattern next two weeks, below average, and then you see in week three to four, which rounds off February, there's some potential, at least the white starts showing up in the end of February of bringing at least some precipitation. This type of weather pattern, we call it the all or nothing, but it does bring the potential for at least a cutoff low pressure system or a breakaway low pressure system that can somehow go up and over or underneath this massive anomaly or upper level high pressure in the Pacific.